<laughs> well, y'all were talking about Martin Sector, so I thought, you know. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Thank God we don't have video on this podcast. Y'all didn't know video. No, it's yeah. all audio. Two. Yeah, I could do some Martin Sexton. Shoot. He ain't nothing but a little white oh, me. I'm not I'm doing it wrong. Shoot. He's a little God. white me. And I don't want to talk about politics. I ain't talking about no politics on this thing. No. Sorry about no. my nostrils. My nostrils. I see my nostrils on the video part. Of, why I gotta have such We're big gonna, nostrils? Damn, I'm what it is. Screenshot of the nostrils for sure. Damn nation. Here you go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Good gracious me. Uh, those are ooh. those are extenuating booger vaults if there ever was such a thing. <laughs> Jim, it's good to see you. Your, your, it's good to see you. Can you turn down the light in the room? The, the reflection off the top of your head is blinding me. Yeah. And Lionel, uh, 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 nice what you did with all the trains. That's good, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. I, I love it. Yeah, I'm man. You and Neil that. Young doing them, them trains, man. That's great, man. Ooh, shoot. <laughs> Hi, gents. Sorry I was late. Sorry. I no was actually problem. giving no an problem. interview about the music business to a neighbor friend of mine who uh, actually ended up singing on a bunch of my albums. He's at Berkeley now in his second year. And uh, I feel like I've kind of mentored him a bit. And uh, uh, he, we got started a little late and he had a bevy of questions. And then I had to talk all the stuff that old people have to talk about when you get old. When you just start talking... And he just sort of looked at me, and um, I just thought people wanted me to talk when these things came up. And I guess it's so, but I'm one of those old black people that just start talking. And do I have a booger? Is that a booger? Anyway, no, I don't see. I see no booger. You know, right. no, booger free. Booger free. That is the title should of my I, next album, I? by the way. But <laughs> booger free. All right, we're. I. I'd usually play the introduction before we I get think started. It, that ahead, ship has sailed. No, play, play <laughs> it. Play. I need to, I need. I don't want to be right. on the outskirts this, of your shit. Go ahead, do your thing. This, this is the introduction to the podcast. Funny, not funny. Funny, not funny, bitches. <laughs> hey, it's not funny as you thought it was. <laughs> we have Vance Gilbert with us today on Funny Not Ain't Funny nobody the podcast. Laughing. And <laughs> that jam is Vance, that's a jam. Uh, that's a jam. Vance is a good friend of mine, and uh, we well, go I way was back anyway, to the open mic the... scene. Oh, we man. we were. Very good friends at one point. Something <laughs> happened about five minutes into our recording, and um, uh, can I say we 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 were at the naked the naked city and um, we were the old the old Vienna sausage house, which I can't forget his uh, the the old Vienna coffee house, and um, uh, then Vance started touring around with people like Sean Colvin, and he's made thirteen albums. And uh, he's making a new one right now, and I can't wait. Vance um, always makes me want to write a better song. Wow, so, Jim, that's uh, uh, that's my introduction. God, that's that's quite a resounding uh, resoundment there. That's uh, thank you. Uh, I I was going for resounding. Um, so uh, how are you doing, Vance? Well, how you're? We're I'm, we're talking. You're in Arlington, right? I am. I'm in Arlington, Massachusetts, and. Um, I just voted today. Can I say that? Right. Okay. Sure. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you didn't say for who. No, no, no. I ain't worrying. I, that's none of your business. I don't want to talk about politics here. I ain't going to talk about politics. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't, good for you. You got your voted sticker, Lionel. Go ahead, man. I Go voted. ahead, man. I ain't, I ain't going to talk about who I voted for or anything like that. Um, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I voted just, for more booze in Massachusetts. That, that's one thing I made sure to vote for. Well, okay, um, all right. I'm a, they, I'm I think pretty much a prohibitionist. I, I came up, uh, oh, yeah? I, I came up with a lot of alcohol and addiction around me. So I, I voted, I voted strangely in some places. I'm, uh, you could say I'm, I'm kind of the black Her Herschel Walker. 
Wait a minute. <laughs> no. No, wait a minute. What? No, never mind. No, we're not going to talk politics, man. Don't talk politics. We, no, we need no, we, don't, we don't have to talk politics. I mean, the I guess only, if it comes up, then we will. You know, the main thing is that Lionel and I don't talk about politics because we bore people enough, and I just figure that we will, you know. But how was your voting experience? I mean, how was the experience of going to the polling place and voting? Everything well, cool? Well, it was great. It was actually uh -huh. quite fun. Um, I ran. I I. I sort of uh, made it part of my little three-mile jaunt this evening. Uh, part of that was up this. <laughs> I got up the hill and made the left and the right, and then went up another little hill to the front of the school. <laughs> I came huffing. And after the EMT, huffing. after the EMTs <laughs> applied the paddles, <laughs> and, uh, and you know, there's a bunch of people there. And there was a policeman there, and all the policemen have seen me running around town because I. And, you know, in their last uh, two years as part of the pandemic, I dropped 30 pounds out putting on some real good mileage. Uh, I put about 12 or 15 awesome. pounds of that back, but I'm still out there putting in the mileage. <laughs> the policeman <laughs> uh, looks at me and everybody looks at him looking at me and he says, what the hell are you huffing and puffing for? I see you running around this city all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, officer. <laughs> You better get out my face. <laughs> so here I am back and forth with this officer, which was cute. And then uh, there were two neighbors from various parts of town. There was, it, you know, that knew me and uh, I hadn't seen in a while. And we chatted for a moment. And uh, then I went in and uh, voted and came back out and went past the officer and told him to shut up again. <laughs> In front of some of his friends, <laughs> our boys in blue. Oh, That's right, a, right. A building, building community relationships. And I said, I, I guess I should be careful because you could probably catch me. And then I looked at his waistline. I said, No, nah, never mind. So <laughs> it's a dead heat. <laughs> so it was an eventful um, runnage. It was. How was the uh, the polling place? Uh, was there? It, was it crowded or no? Was it no, this sparse, was or? no. It was pretty sparse for all intent and purposes. It was around mm. three forty-five. It wasn't bad. Um, yeah, there was no line for anything. Plenty of little booths. The, the magic markers still had juice in them, and um, right. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was fine. Cool. What yeah, about you, Lionel? Was, you're you're in San Antonio, Texas. San Antonio. I'm in like suburban San Antonio, so I went to the local high school, local elementary school, the Bobby Bello uh, High School, and there was a long line of people, and it wasn't moving fast, and we were about 25 minutes in line. Huh? Um, but you know, it was great. We hung out. Uh, a guy joined behind me with his two very young sons. One's in first grade. One's in fourth grade. We had a great talk. We just hung out. It, it actually is a nice. It's a nice opportunity just to make friends with people and just talk to people, especially if they got two the kids with backpacks. Yeah, you know, just you know, just talking about this. You know, at least you got something in common. You're showing up to vote, it, so it means you're a little bit plugged in. Weren't that to be the way of the world, huh? Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think the the pandemic accelerated what was already uh, not a good trend, which is people sort of not interacting with other people, interacting with little black screens, um, you know, interacting with their phones. But Man, not you scared the hell of me. Uh, you said little black, and I didn't know what you were going to follow that with. I was like, I know, I where's I, 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 The moment the words went out of my mouth, oh, I was like, okay, the God. deep south. Interacting we with little Chatty black. Chatty Cathy String. Dickens. <laughs> <laughs> little black. Holy yeah, smell. don't. Okay, let's let's. So I've been. We we, we caught your show last night, which oh, was awesome. Yeah, thanks, you're very kind thank for you. hanging you. with that. Thank you for the shout out. You've been doing the Saturday, uh, the Monday night pajama party since the beginning of the pandemic, right? You Every bet. week, is that right? You bet. Yeah, that's amazing. It's, it's um, you know the the whole thing with it is um, the whole thing with the pajama party is it's an opportunity for me to practice and. Yeah an opportunity for me to inadvertently really to make a little community. There's a, a circle of folks that are pretty consistent. There's uh, somewhere between 60 and 120 people that rotate in and out that 
know that I'm there, that will come and hang. And, uh, you know, if some of it was, was advertisement, but some of it was also from the heart and the fact that I knew that I wasn't going to starve if I had to take two years from playing and singing. I mean, things would be tough, mm -hmm. but I would never uh, have a nutritional deficit from it. And I knew that there were those that didn't have what I had. So I made it a point to donate, uh, I call it 10%, but it's always more because uh, I just start writing checks. At the end of the month, I pick the four, I do the four shows and I write the checks and I write off 10% of whatever I drag in for the show to some 5013C in our Massachusetts area. And they could be uh, that's cool, Boston area uh, LGBTQ plus alliance for our uh, youth Bagley, or it could be for um, uh, although I've got a file of things that I've that I've given to uh, the MSPCA and Angel of uh, uh, my college Connecticut College for their development. Um, uh, Massachusetts Housing and Shelter Alliance I've given to uh, Nova Ukraine uh, it's a group of people here that give me move money to uh, to help the people in Ukraine and um, I even have a check ready to go to uh, send off to the UN for uh, uh, for Somalian refugees so wow just and that's all, and that's proceeds from the from the online show. Yeah, just a little percentage that's of what really I cool. what I made that evening, you know. And that's all I can hope for is to do something that's a little cool, like you say. It's not brown, groundbreaking, but I give it a shout out three or four times during the show and let people know that these organizations actually exist. And uh, I figured I'm doing something good. So, so if if people. If if both of our listeners want to join your show and want to participate, how would they do that? I'm I was trying to make a joke there. Yeah, yeah. Um, that would be so. That would make sixty three people that come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, You're in the double digits. Dude. That's it, right? You're way in the stratosphere, yeah. right? <laughs> um, at seven thirty uh, Eastern time, six thirty for you people in Texas. That's all right. they have to do is uh, on a Monday night at that time, go to my YouTube channel and click on the link. There's yeah, no I just searched uh, Vance Gilbert YouTube and uh, took me right there. That's it. Yeah. And there's yeah. a mechanism. It's pretty clear once they get there, there's a mechanism where they can donate or or you know otherwise oh yeah you've got that floating how did you do that you've got you've actually got a tech person helping you out is it craig who's no nah, um, but i just made i made him uh no craig is actually a bouncer he's a little he, oh. he works he's more of a tech person for hayes carl um mm -hmm. but i just made him a tech person starting last week actually to because i was starting to get some spam so he just gets rid of that Every once in a while, he'll help by putting up a link for where I'm donating to or uh, a link to where you can donate to me. I usually do that. Yeah. Actually, I do that myself as I'll go through a strum and I'll hit the button to send uh -huh. it. <laughs> Just like paste. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's, uh, I set all that up so that it's, it's pretty easy to do. Um, cool. So but if somebody joins, it'll be clear what they need to do. It's been clear what they want to do. They don't have to pay me anything. Uh, yes, yeah. well, they, whatever they right. want to do. What they need to do, but yeah, yeah, yeah. the options are made clear to them. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. We've it's, talked about this. You know, we talked about this, Lionel. Where what's missing from music is that micropayment to the musician is you know uh, instead of relying entirely on streaming revenue, that that musicians should be you know, that fans should be able to like you know throw money in the tip jar uh for the stuff that they that they love yeah push one and, button yeah so i mean it's not it's not wrong to put that information up over and over again i think it's no i i, I don't feel fans. bad about it at all i don't feel bad about it at all maybe yeah. maybe giving to that organization makes me feel even better about it in a way um, yeah but uh you know for the overall i i really don't feel i really don't feel feel bad about it uh it's it's uh 
you know, again, it's just a way to make a little bit of community because some people, we, we've become feral. <laughs> you know, we didn't yeah. go out for two years. Yeah. And some of us yeah. were feral anyway. So, because, you know, the web makes you feral, whether you go out or not. People have gotten, it's gotten easy to do a whole lot of stuff on the web and to do a whole lot of nothing uh, in real time. So it didn't take the yeah. pandemic to figure out that that there's a market out there for people that are, you know, too tied up in their day-to-day -to, -day to do shit. That's, that was easy music. Yeah, it reminds um, me of a... Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 you, no, go ahead. No, this reminds me of a story I was reading again. where... where... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we're just... You guys uh, are like... The, like... You, are, you two are like a hydra Baker. that doesn't know who to bite. Should I bite him? No, then I'll bite Hercules. I'll bite him. Oh, where'd he go? No. Oh, he got away. Shit. I, we could have bit him all up in his ass if he wasn't talking. You're the worst Hydra ever. I, one comment that really got to me last night from your show was I feel like it's a first, what was it the tune that you did, which is Ain't No Stopping Us Now? Oh my God! You, yeah, that tune. That oh, geez, Louise. I was, I, I was just like in front of the TV. I was just like that sounded so good. But the thing I the comment I love is like it feels like a combination of Parliament Funkadelic and Leo Kaki. I was like, wow, <laughs> it was so funny. wow. I think all my so shows don't end up Leo. like that. Sometimes it's all ballads. Sometimes it's all kind of acoustic. Uh, you know kind of John Martin kind of thing, you know. But yeah, were you doing like some kind of English folk thing and then you segged into, I, I forget the other tune, but you were doing something that sounded like an English, like a, an English, like traditional ballad. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then you segged smoothly into another tune. What was that? Help me. Uh, I might have been well, doing uh, Spencer the Rover and I might have gone into By the Time I Get to Phoenix. Yes, yeah. exactly. Was, the, the Jimmy Webb tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And both of them were smoking great. tunes that happened to be in E. So it was, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, that was great, Vince. But, I want to send you. I want to share a a comment that uh, Lionel texted me last night while he was listening to. You. He texted me, "Yeah, if someone asked me to play a Delphonics tune apropos of nothing, I'd probably have a stroke." <laughs> Well, I don't. I don't know if it was a Delphonics tune, but you did. You were talking about the Philly Soul guy who had just passed away, and you talked about Delphonics and two other bands. I don't remember right now, um, but was, uh, Delphonics, was, uh, like, wow. the Stylistics, and the Intruders, and mm. some of those tunes. So you're both musicians. So, but some of those tunes, uh, the writing <laughs> is. Uh, I mean, I'm, it's a heresy member, but they put Motown to shame. I know, I know they get kind of grouped together, but there's a lot of sus there's a lot of crazy suspended. Um, a lot of that yeah. no yeah. certain. <laughs> there, there's a touch of magic in your eyes. Candy man appears each time you find. <laughs> then they go up, uh, it's like, what? And they make yeah. it go down so easy that it's so different from, I've got sunshine on a cloudy right. day, which right. you could, most of us could play in our sleep. But yeah. uh, Betcha by Golly Wow and those tunes are like, uh, yikes. That's what I said. I stay away from them because they're really, um, I, again, what I think is so amazing about those songs is that they're, they're, they're written, here, I, here, you'll love this line, or you'll love my little, my verbal mashups, they're written as if, uh, um, uh, like, like Pete Seeger and Herbie Hancock were, rat, or were writing together, <laughs> like, you know, they've got this simple uh, verbal thing going on, but the chords are as if you've just come off the, the road with Miles Davis, so it's, uh, right. but they make it go down so easy, you know? Yeah, it's, it's those fist yeah, chords, this, you know, where your hand looks like it's, you know, having a little oh, episode. Oh, or the opposite, a spider chord, it's like, it, oh it, yeah, right. 
Does a does a web come with that? <laughs> <laughs> now, Vance, you you grew up in Philadelphia. Lionel and I were Philadelphia transplants for a while. Lionel was working out of Philly. I moved to Philly after college because I didn't really know what I, what to do, and um, uh, so I, I I lived in. But you did, did you live in the city or or outside of the city? I, I did both. I, I, from the age of one to uh, ten or nine, I was in uh, Germantown. Uh, so oh, that's, uh, yeah. that's, the, that's in the city. And then my, uh, my parents moved to Willingboro, New Jersey. But I okay. found them. And uh, they were, uh, they, that's some of my best material. Hello. That was, that was one of my best jokes, y'all. My parents moved to New Jersey, but I found them. <laughs> but I found. Come on, Lionel. I'm just slow. I'm slow. What the hell, Sorry, man? I'm slow. I'm slow. Jeez, but Louise. I found them. Is this all? But is I this? found. That Hello? Was the Testing. One, two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing with you guys. Um, yeah, but, you know, my parents were, you know, it was that, sub, like, wishing to be suburban thing where, you know, they're both working jobs, and uh, if you could rub two nickels together and come up with 11 and a half cents, you could get a down payment on a house that was not connected to another house. So yeah. with, a, with a lawn and uh, a little gate in the whole thing. So that's where we ended yeah. up in one of those Levittown uh, cardboard castle uh, towns where all the uh, so sure. Lionel's raising his hand, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. My dad, you know, my dad came came back from World War II and uh, they actually moved to Levittown because that was like the Ikea Actual of 1949, you know? Exactly. Like, Holy crap, I can own this house and I exactly. got a piece of grass and a exactly. this totally rocks. Now the yeah. other side of that is the fact that um, Abraham Levitt, who made these Levittowns, I was in Willingboro, which was a Levittown, and there's a handfuls of them, uh, even in Colorado, I think there's one in Hawaii, um, they were, uh, although they were built by a, by a Jewish man, uh, they were places that uh, uh, the planners of these towns didn't want Jews or blacks living in them. Yeah. And some of the first uh, noted suits, uh, class action suits against uh, a, a construction builder planner were against Levittown and their racist policies that there were class action suits that were won and set a whole lot of U.S. precedent as to how those kind of suits could go. So they're notable for that. And then my people came in there. And uh, uh, mm -hmm. Willingboro, uh, at some point, was predominantly black coming through the, uh, the, the 80s and 90s, I believe. I wasn't there by then, but uh, mm -hmm. my how things change, you know, so... Uh, a did, did a white white like flight can take its many forms, you know, many forms. Did you like it there in Willingboro? Did you, were you happy? Well, I mean, I yes and no. I was ten. Uh, I didn't know what to be happy about. You know, I, my upbringing was was tough, Lionel. I was uh, I was brought up in a alcoholic, uh, paranoid, schizophrenic household, so. Uh, um, one parent had one, one, one parent had the other. And, uh, I was always hoping to come home to a house that still existed and trying not to get beat. So, uh, did I like growing up there? I would have loved to have grown up anywhere that didn't have those aspects to it. But, yeah. and I, you know, I wasn't voting in the town, so I had mm. friends on the street and all that goes with that. So it's a, it's a loaded question. You know, it's, it's a question that, can you ask somebody that was between 10 and 16? I guess you can. You know, I made a bunch of friends that <laughs> liked everything from Richard Pryor to the Beach Boys to um, uh, Grand Front Railroad to Earth, Wind & Fire. So it was a real uh, mixed bag of kids. And uh, yeah, that's how, we, that's how we rolled. We were... Uh, like I, as the piece I do at the uh, at the end of uh, the album, uh, that the and the piece starts. We were brown and tall, Jew and small, freckle fat, buck tooth, flat, black and broken, short and Christian, with teeth and hair in every direction. We were twenty different ways on how to pitch a catch a ball, but the day before November was the best day of the fall. So 
that piece speaks clearly to, you know, the mixed bag that it would be growing up uh, in the 60s into 70s. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I played that for um, <clears throat> my daughters are in the room. I played that song the other day, and uh, and my youngest was like, "What? What? You mean? Uh, you mean the father hit the kid?" And yeah, that she was like, that, "That actually happens." Um, and yeah, I'm like, "Yeah," and I'm really glad you think it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I must be doing something right. Right, right. Yeah, I'm not um, hitting you. There you go. Right, you know, you're, you're glad that they think it doesn't happen for now. You know, by yeah. the time they're 16, 17 year old, you hope that you hope they know that they think it happens. So when they go to college, they're working towards something to uh, alleviate uh, poverty and uh, make opportunity and uh, take care of themselves as women and all the things they need to do. Because you never know what you're going to run into. You got two girls, Jim, right? Yeah, and they're and they're very socially aware, both in public school, and you know they're they're very aware of, of class differences. It's not like we're kind of at the top of that, but um, you know they know there's like there's different cultures and there's different different types of people, and some are having a really really hard time. Some of their classmates have been homeless, um, and so they're they're aware. It was just this one thing that yes, just seemed to catch it, it catch my youngest. Catch, off guard. yeah, particularly about somebody that you know, daddy knows. It's got to be. It's got to be wild to think, you know. It's. Um, yeah. I just started a book called uh, uh, "The Warmth of Other Sons," sons, and uh, I have to I've look heard up of this. this. Yeah, it's a it's magnificent. Um, uh, stand by, I, I'm I'm looking up uh, by Isabel Wilkerson, and it is based around the uh, diaspora of black people from the south to the north from mm. really tracking it from around 1870 to 1970 and the stories therein including her people and and those are my people too you know my dad's folks mm. were from florida and my mother's folks uh -huh. well they didn't have to go far they went they were in maryland and pretty much stayed but that was kind of north and uh mm -hmm. you know there's a whole sensibility of that comes out of parts of downtrodden uh, uh, communities where you know you keep a kid in line because if a kid get out of line on Thursday that's mommy and daddy uh, swinging from a tree on Saturday afternoon so yeah. there that's there was that sensibility and also the sensibility of uh, people treat their children as they have been treated by sharecropper leaders and slave owners and all that oh, stuff yeah you know, so, I mean, it's a, and we carry that with us, you know, we carry that with us. I vowed that if I ever had children, and I haven't, that uh, I don't have any I know of, um, but if I was to have kids, man, I, I, I would never raise my hand to them, no matter what, because, because. Yeah, know? just because, that's a shitty thing to do. I'm, uh. I, I promised I would never raise my voice to my kids. That went away really fast when they were young. <laughs> like, yeah. Why am I screaming? Wait, I'm screaming. Why? I'm screaming because she's running into the street in front of a car. That's well, why. Right, okay, I'm, right. that, I'm screaming. And, and you know, that but also then, might get you know, Right, right. That also might get I'm your tired ass paddled. Too. It might get your ass paddled, too. <laughs> Like well, it, yeah, but that, but never, but never from me. I mean, that's, I know, yeah, I, I know, but it's ever, hard to not. Yeah. You know, it's like it because well, you're yeah. thinking. You think my hand hurts? Imagine if that car had run over your ass. <laughs> you know, it is, especially in the city. Here, there's one. It's it's, it's like a, a a dire emergency. You really have to teach the kids not to right. not to run out and get killed. Somewhere. Right, right. Um, but Vance, I want to um, wait, 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 Lionel. I want to play. Are you okay if I play a clip from from some of your work? Sure, man. Whatever you want to play. This I, I got. I I've actually got five clips, but I don't have to play them all. Um, I just want to play this one. This one, God, it just makes me feel so good listening to this song. This is called, um, this one is off of Bad Dog Buffet, and it's called God Bless Everyone. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Rule number one about traps that have learned. Turn your back on your bait when you barter. So I thanked him twice and said, that's very nice. But I think I'll just stay a slow starter. Oh, 
glass all the ships at sea Oh, bless all the good things that make their way back to me Bless all the stars and how far they fell Through the wind and the snow and the rain and the sun Oh, what the hell, God bless everyone I could be my daddy's most favorite child Or I could be angry and broken and wild But I stand here before you the one undefiled Cause I refuse to choose between them Getting quite good at riding this It's so positive it's like it's it's like a yeah. big ray of sunshine it's like it's like a sun's too bright in the afternoon and it's shining in your face Oh you thank you man there. that means the world to hear that from you I, I call it my fast unitarian waltz <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's a woo, God bless everyone. Everybody's in the fold. Uh, what I love most about recording that song, um, that's Kevin uh, in indefatigable, uh, unmistakable Kevin Barry on guitar uh, playing those. Uh, I was going to ask because I love that. Oh, I don't yeah. usually love that sort of like wandering and it's like it's all in through the verse and everything. Right. But it, it works so well in that song. So here's what's cool about uh, about that is that he uh, when I sent him uh, what to do, you know, I I. I, I demand that a musician, whoever it is, drummer or anybody else, they get a lyric sheet. So they could hear and mm -hmm. see what's going on. And Kevin was playing through that. And there's some funny parts later in the tune. Um, and he's playing like, you know, there was no second takes of that because he's a monster. And he's playing yeah. his shit, you know, he's knocking it yeah. out and cracking up. <laughs> so he's, <laughs> he's clearly in the middle of what's being said and playing. And you can't ask for more than that, man. It it well <laughs> it usually that's usually a disaster. Like I, um, Henry Rollins, a lot of his a lot of his Rollins band stuff. You know, there's a, the lead continues all the way. It never stops. Like you, you know, you have to hit the guy with a cricket mallet just to get him to stop <laughs> playing, but he never does. You know, um, and and it, in my opinion, I don't feel like it works very well. This this for some reason, it's just like it's beautiful. It's like I'm at a dead show or something, and it's just. But it's like so much brighter. It's really great. Oh, I'm so glad you dig that for that because that that was the uh, that was the yay yippee feel for that tune. And I've been ending shows mm -hmm. with that, and uh, end it with a big whoa. And I'm singing large and stepping off the mic and you know showing people my junk and stuff and just making it so that <laughs> people know that I mean it and I'm sincere and I want the world to love me and I want the world to love itself and. All the things that go with that, so I'm glad it's taken in that uh, in yeah, that in that, that context. I, um, totally dig it. Totally dig it. Bad Dog Buffet. Um, wait, I got another one. So, all right, this one, this one really clomped me on the top of the head. This is this is a song that I I wish I had written. This is a really great song. It is off of uh, Good Good Man, most recent, uh, aside from the one that's going to be coming out soon. This one's called Hitman. Crackhead like oh. this, clearly just a fender bender. Sorry I ran into you. Here's a roll of hundred dollar bills. Pretty certain that'll do. Eighty years will give you wrinkles. Wrinkles never hide the eyes. Eyes are always a dead show giveaway. Even through the best disguise. Kid, you got the kind of face. Like I could tell you anything. It's been a long time between confessions and the peace that, that might bring. A good hitman learns to hide the powder burns. Pull the trigger in a glove. Take another name forever. Take you to the ones you love. The scary, chilling, terrifying song, and it's a it's a complete story. It's like you wrote oh, a short I'm story so and you proud of this jammed song. it into three minutes. It's I'm amazing. I'm so proud of the song. I, you know, it, it, in oh. my mind, it's a, like a it's like a cross between something uh, uh, something uh, uh, 
how can I say it? It's like Jason Isbell meets you meets, uh, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Cause you, you I mean, that's, um, do you remember be, me being over your house at some point? And, uh, we were just sitting around swapping tunes. We had had, I think we had gone for sushi or something, but we were mm-hmm. sitting swapping tunes and, uh, you played uh, a cover for me. You played Jeremy. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, the Pearl Jam song. The Pearl Jam song, and I was messed up, man. I was like, "Yeah, wow, what a depiction!" And you had you had done what you do in your inimitable fashion. You had stripped it for its freaking parts, and you were mm-hmm. just playing it, and it just sounded like it was just your face and the guitar were one. And I was just like, "Wow." What a story. It's a like, murder ballad, you know. I mean, it, it's a Absolutely. folk song underneath. These are these Absolutely. are stories. Oh, they, they're know? that's the you know yeah. uh, what's his name? John Childs would have been very happy to collect these a <laughs> right. uh, hundred years from now if he had to. Um, but yeah, I, that that sounded like like yeah, that's one of my Infantino Isbell. Uh, you know, if your name wow, begins with well, look, I, you know, if your name begins with I, that's what it sounds like. So. It, I'm, I'm flattered you think of me with that song that's uh there every line in that um spins the wheel a little more well, and, everyone and it, has weight uh, every line has, has more weight. meaning right it's really incredible good i'm glad you think so i'm yeah. glad you think so um and when you when i used to go to these songwriting groups things you know that was uh that was something that uh that we kind of drilled into each of our heads, you know. Ellis Paul also was big on that. In fact, you, there's no there's no fluffy language here. Everything has right. to have some weight, and we, I yeah. think we were all living with those of us that did not live up to that kind of. <laughs> they didn't hang out with us. They didn't hang out. That's no. so arrogant. It's so freaking <laughs> arrogant. But it's we so, were. We were we arrogant. were we were we were like fierce back then, you know. It was we like were. It, we had no patience for anybody who was going to write something light and fluffy. The problem was like I took that out into the Falcon Ridge Folk Festival and and outside of Boston, and it was like people were like, "Oh, you're kind of mean, <laughs> right?" But well, that was our I, attitude. And then I took it out there, and they said, "Well, he's kind of mean, but he's black, so it's okay." <laughs> <laughs> black people black people can be mean they've been oppressed so they're angry they're I hear angry, that they're angry. Oh, yes. let's cl- let's clap now clap now <laughs> damn it yeah. clap now who knows but what he's gonna do he saw us park clap now <laughs> he knows what my car looks like <laughs> yeah yeah I, i've been through your wallet i know where you live <laughs> yeah it's uh but we were we were you know what we were I, I deign to say we were arrogant. We were arrogant only in the fact that we were doing this the best way that we knew how, but we were vigilant is what we were, Jim. We were vigilant. We saw we saw ourselves as the best writers we could be, and that made no room for uh, the soft tunes just never rose to the top. They just did. No, we so, were, I mean, it, it's true. I mean, I think that we we just wanted... We wanted to impress each other because we, it was this rare time where there was a meeting of a bunch of people that were very serious about writing great songs. That's right. And not serious about writing necessarily pop songs or songs that would be popular, but writing great right. songs that would right. last. Right. And we had no patience for anything that, that no, didn't fit that. We didn't. You know? And so. we were good to each other. It wasn't, you know, what was odd about it is that we also weren't competing. We didn't seem like we were competing mm. with each other because we were supporting each other, but we just wanted to be, we wanted all of us to be in the same fold. We wanted that group of us to be all good. Look at look where I come from. Oh, yeah, I'm from that Boston crowd. Oh, yeah, right. I know. I know Dar and Marty and Ellis and Jim yeah. and, and you know, and the list goes on. And you know, that, we had yeah. that where, you know, so... Yeah. So well, I think we had some admiration for each other too. So, so oh, we big were time! To big time! We were yeah. we were we were you know Stravinsky. You know, a good composers borrow, great composers steal. We <laughs> steal. were you know we were uh, we were on all of that. So yeah. and Jan Luby, I remember Jan Luby. Oh, well, Jan Jan thing. was Jan was great. Jan was also was a great game. selector of tunes too. She was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Christmas in the trenches. Her acapella version of that. The, uh, was stupid good. Uh, who wrote Christmas yeah. in the Trenches? Help me. Um, 
Um, John McCutcheon. Oh. Yeah. Uh, she crushed that tune. She always yeah. crushed. I couldn't wait for her to sing that around Christmas time. She was. She always <laughs> knocked that out. And uh, so yeah, we were uh, we were vigilant and and uh, l- lovingly myopic and uh, as good. I think as it worked. We, you know. I think so. Too. I think it worked. Yeah. Yeah. I, I felt. I felt like I became a better writer because of the writers around me. I bet. Absolutely. I. I. I think so too. I think. I think we all did. I think we. I think we had to, even if we didn't have the songs right then. We had a methodology mm-hmm. to um, to come up with great songs. We knew how to come up with great songs. We knew uh, we knew there was a bar, and we knew that w- there was no fear in going up to it. I had a student yeah. say to me the other day, he said, well, you know, that's a great line. I guess I could use it, but it just sounds it just sounds too poetic." And mm. I said, uh, mm. "We need to talk, bro." <laughs> oh, we need to talk. Sounds too poetic. Come on now. Um, yeah. Don't do? don't fear. You know. Just don't fear. That's all. So. Yeah. 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 I have a. I do. I do. I have other clips. Are, is this okay? Playing well, clips and talking. Man, you can do yeah. whatever you want. You are the Jim Infantino. What? Mm-hmm. Come on now. Mm-hmm. I want to play. I'm gonna. This follows. Uh, this follows along. Hold on. This is. Um, this one I think is also off of uh, Good Good Man. I could be wrong. I don't care. I'm gonna play it anyway. Oh, they'll make your belly lame and go all wrong. You can live on pie and whiskey, but you surely won't live too long. You can sing yourself a lullaby Like your mama sang to you Hers was it just like a ringing a bell Yours is like a worn out shoe She had a voice Just like a heart Yours just like leather nails and blue You can sing yourself a lullaby So there's a lick in there like when you play it live there's that um da 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 it's not that's not it but there's a particular guitar lick in there and I saw you play it live and I'm like oh man that's Jimi Hendrix and then at the end of it you go into Little Wing which, oh, that's uh, so yeah. I think yeah. Which I was like, it was like you were reading my mind. I was like, ah, does he know that he's like doing this Jimi Hendrix lick? And then you know, you of course you know, right? It just well, it's up. funny. Uh, uh, well, on on the on that recorded version, though, um, it's not as prominent. There's a, no, a it, it better not be because I'm playing pretty much. Um, I'm playing straight time um, on the guitar, and that's uh, Tommy Malone from the Subdudes. Oh. On on guitar on that uh, that all those fills. Uh, it's a big. It's just a big comfy sound. Yeah, that that's and that's what you know. That album. That's all it was meant to be. You know, I got Brad Hatfield that I knew from the old jazz days, uh, uh, arranging strings and playing some organ and and harp and I just wanted it to sound like uh, some old album from the 70s that that mm. people had forgotten about or something you know and uh, well the changes feel a little like ray charles you know part way through and yeah like, yeah it's yeah. just got a great feel yeah thank you thanks for uh thanks for pulling that up yeah that's uh that's a staple in my in my live show uh but i also get to play kind of a fun solo on there it's sort of the uh my my imitating I don't know who I'm imitating, kind of like Leo Kotke kind of thing. Uh, but mm. uh, you know, I've gotten better. You know, I'm getting around on the guitar better. And, oh my God! I mean, no, you're great. You've, uh, you've, well, you've, you're kind. You've always I'm, been I mean, great. But I, uh, but I tell people that uh, you know, at I, you know, I just turned sixty four, and I've never played, sung, or written better than right now. No, <laughs> it mm. it took that long. To start coming up with stuff that made any kind of sense to me that that was working, and I go there by that you know old uh, uh, Miles Davis uh, saying that says uh, sometimes it takes your whole lifetime to sound like yourself. 
you know. <laughs> that's so. Uh, that's the truth. I think. But you know, sixty-four people say sixty-four is the new sixty-two. So it's. Uh, well, I hope so. And you know, if I could, yeah. you know, there are times I'm just hoping to gain a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, what? What day is it? You know, what I get an hour? Sunday night? I <laughs> Saturday night? I was like, bitches, I got a whole hour. Woo! Shoot! But my well, partner hates Funny it. you mentioned that. It's funny you mention that because one of our previous guests was Phil Broikos, who does, who who did this episode, which I recommend. Oh, it's, um, it's about it's, a day it's in amazing. music. It's it's a project. Do you know about this? No, what's it called? It's called a day in music, and it's a project where he is recording twenty four hours of music. Each album is one of twenty four albums, and each album is divided into twelve exact five minute songs. So midnight to midnight, five past midnight, 12.05 to 12.10, and so forth. And he bases each song upon a historical or a fictional event that took place. And I know this sounds totally geeky and totally unappealing until you listen to some of his freaking tunes. The tunes are, the tunes they are, are sweet. They are outrageous. These are his yeah, songs? I can't, I, yeah. They're all, they're his songs. He's got a lot of collaborators. There's a lot of people who are into him. But it's all but, his writing. Yeah. But I'll send you an email. There is like three oh, or please. four tunes that I think are right up there in the pantheon. But one of the, and now I've lost complete, but one of the songs he did, the first song for like, uh, he did 2 a.m., 2 to 3 a.m., most recent one he did. The first one is about daylight savings time, about getting an hour back in your life. And it's this absolutely angelic, it's this ethereal, uplifting tune. Oh my God. And it's just everything is rising up at the same time. And he said, it's just amazing. You. An hour, how precious is an hour? And to get one for free, nobody hands these things out for free. <laughs> and, and it was just, a, it's a magnificent, so when you said that about it, you know, I get an extra hour, I immediately thought of Phil, and he wrote this absolutely angelic, of course, five-minute tune about it, but totally Exactly worth five minutes. Oh, exactly my five God. Minutes, every single tune. Yeah, and it's yeah. mind-bending, and, and he, everything is based on an event that took place at that time of day. And he said that when he was, you know, he started in the middle of the night, he said, what happens in the middle of the night? Oh, people die. So he has all these songs about people dying, you know, um, in the first in the first two albums, first album. Um, but they're all, but they're all so beautiful. If you didn't know what they're about, you, they just feel so personal. And they're they're just great songs. And and the idea is to do 24 of them, 24 of these albums. He's got three of them done. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But anyway, it's just, I, but like you're saying, an hour, you know, I get an hour back. Like you said, you know, you start to realize, wow, an hour means a lot. Yeah. You know, time means a lot. No, you ain't kidding. I mean, I, that, well, you'll have to send me this link. It, it, it reminds me of a, uh, a song by Susan Werner, uh, May I Suggest. And, and the lines go, uh, uh, one of the lines goes, and, and, and when it's done, and when the dark descends, oh, we'd give anything for one more hour of light. Yep, that's yeah. right. She's a uh, monster writer. She's oh, so yeah, good. she is. She's got she's got all the things down. You know, great guitarist, great piano player, great vocalist, uh, mm. wonderful writer, uh, to yep. top notch. And you know, I think a lot of times people like that, the music business doesn't know what to do with them. So they, you know, <laughs> well, they they do what they do in the music business and make their money, but they aren't stars because of uh, the X and the Y didn't line up to equal to Z for some reason. Uh, but yeah, she's a she's a beast. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would like to play another song. Another song. Shoot, man! I can't. I didn't know you were going to do all all up in my grill with song. Damn! Man, are these two, no, I can stop. I can stop. No, please stop I'm anytime. Like, no, this swear. is it. All right, shoot. The real deal. This is the title track off of Old White Men. I love this song. Some old wooden box, and inside lay a gem made of string and spring and wooden glue. Right then and there, I'm sure I knew firsthand the raw ingredients of old white men. Oh, white man, get teary on December 7th. Oh, white man, salute every flag they see. 
old white man Didn't care how cool I couldn't be A drop of glue will do to help it man Put the cap on when you're through Said old white man It was all ball peen hammers and calipers Dovetail joints and acetone Tubes and printed circuits Screws and spokes and wheels is this a, there must there's a I just picture you as a kid putting together airplanes because I can't tell exactly what you're building in this song, man. And I know you know that you've been a, a an avid uh, uh, rubber band airplane uh, flyer, uh, and uh, that you that that is a kind of an art form uh, when when done to the level that you do it. Woo! Listen to you knowing all this shit, Jim. <laughs> Infant teeth mouth. Damn, bro, you man, oh See, man, I, you got me. You got me. Is that, is, uh, is that it? Tom Waits, Soldiers Things, which is oh, one of the few right. songs that can make me cry every time I hear it. Yeah, that's a you great know, song. Hubcaps and bowling balls. Everything is a dollar in this. Bo- everything's a dollar yeah. in this box. This one is for bravery, and this one is for me. And everything's a dollar in this box. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's a great. It's a great. Well, this. I mean, so yeah, this has that kind that of in, that kind of list of things, but it puts it, it puts a, a picture. Right. What's, what's he building, building down there? there? Guy yeah, in the dress is a beauty. Go all the way. I swear you never can tell. We're going downtown. I heard he. <laughs> what is it? I heard he spent a little time in jail. <laughs> right? <laughs> the, the rumors going around, man. Oh man. But, yeah. So it, yeah. It, um, so that song, I can just, I can just picture it. I listen to it. I can picture it. But it's, it's, it's funny it's that great. that uh, that list of things. Um, that is very Tom Waitsian, and it's also uh, that's the way another buddy of ours who uh, took another route, uh, David Goldfinger, would write like oh. that. Oh, you remember? A great you remember Dave's writing? Uh, oh uh, yeah. Jim, I mean, um, talking about a room somewhere, all the knickknacks. Oh, yeah, I, I could. Oh, I will uh, forever be quoting David Goldfinger songs. Uh. All the knick-knack, bric-a-brac, odds and ends. A stopwatch, a spyglass, a jackknife, a backstage pass. Yeah. My sense of equilibrium, all the arguments I thought I'd won. Are standing side by side, near worn out coats and alibis in a room somewhere. Full of all the things I'd ever lost. All the things that I've forgotten, every venture misbegotten that cannot be redeemed. All my broken dreams and you. Woo! Oh, man. Yeah. Jesus Are you Christ. kidding me? And I know, no, and, and he was like one of the best songwriters among us, and he was like, nah, man, screw this. I'm, I'm, gonna, this I'm gonna go make a, I'm gonna make a, make my money being a shrink. And yeah, yeah. Uh, to bring that full circle, uh, that song is gonna be on the upcoming album of mine. Oh, cool! Now yeah. you know I should throw. I should record a, a Goldfinger song, um, just because the songs, those songs have to live. The sitting cross-legged on the floor, trading even memories, just like well, jazz, jazz records. Record. Yeah, I used to play. I play that. Did you cover it? Did you play it, son? I have no, no, I haven't. But that's a great idea. I think we should all cover some David Goldfinger. I mean, he's, he's not. I, he's not. You know, but he's doing a lot of flat picking with a flat picking teacher, and that's where he. That's oh, he what is. he wants to chase. He's not doing that's a whole cool. lot of writing anymore. But, uh, you know, when you're talented like that, when you can call on all the kinds of uh, aspects of the muse, you know, I hate people like that. They piss me off. Yeah. It's just <laughs> the worst. Just, just, you know what? Leave it. Why you know you? what? If he's listening, <laughs> fuck you, Leave David. Us a you, David Goldfinger. Fuck you, you know what, man? <laughs> Why should my ass be left fishing downstream from you? <laughs> Y'all yeah. got my little line in a hook and you cast in the net. Motherfucker. Yeah. See what oh, I'm now, saying? Now we've got the explicit. I gotta I gotta tag this with an explicit. That's, that's oh nice. no, no. Let's just take cut that out. Cut that's that all out. Right. Then. That's all no, right. I no, don't no, 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 Don't put no motherfucking E on this thing. Oh, see now look what you got to do. Look what you've made me do. Damn, man. 
We could have kept this G like a motherfucker. No, you no, you had to bring up David Goldfinger, didn't you? Jesus. Yes. Can, we, can we put that on the video? Motherfucking E. It's not just E. It's motherfucking E. I just think we so titled yes. one of our... Just so I you think know. we titled one of our podcasts, It's Like Wearing Your <laughs> Ring to Meet the Pope. Actually, it's worse. Oh, my and God. And making sure he sees awesome. it. Yeah. So I, I don't think we're okay. I think we're all right. Wearing you know. your c*** ring to meet the Pope. It's a quote from William Gibson. It's one of our favorite authors. And making oh, sure that man. he sees it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the second part of the sentence. Make sure he sees it. <laughs> oh, Ooh, my I got a clip God. I got that's perfect for right now. Here we go. Go ahead. Blame you for being mad. My bad, my bad. Cut a whole boy some slack, my bad. I know tapping that was whack, but your wife is still grinning. She seems so glad. Still, it's my bag. Can't keep my mitts off your mama. Ooh, that bitty booty boku fly. I had to put that one on because oh it's just such a crowd. Oh, that's such a. Jesus, that's so funny. You know what's fun about that is uh, the saxophone is Billy Novick. You wouldn't think of Billy Novick. Billy Novick. Billy Novick of Billy Novick and Guy Van Duzer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but Billy can play anything, man. He is a right. he's a monster <clears throat> and a nice oh, that's cat. That's great. That's Nicest great. It, you're right. It's not not what you expect from when when you listen to their music. No, that's no. that's hilarious. Ah, oh, he's way behind the it's way behind the beat. He's, he sounds great. Oh yeah, he's he's sitting right where it's supposed to be. It's just yeah, that. yeah. So you that was like your channeling Billy vibe. Yeah, yeah. You're doing it's, there? it's I've I've done it uh, various times in various settings uh, where I I do my Billy Holiday imitation and uh, it's uh, it sounded great. Just <laughs> thanks, man. It's just it's a. Uh, it's an, it's just a, one of those little trick, kitschy kind of things that in the course of a 60-minute set, that'll just set you apart enough to keep the listener maybe lined up enough to grasp the heavy lyric of the next song. You know, that's, that's my job. You know, I'm entertainment, but I got something I want to say. And I'm going to couch it in some fun things, too. And even the fun things can say things that mean something. You know, I, you know, I, I'm rounding third. Ain't no getting around it. But I, I'm hoping that... Tripping home. I mean, that's it, man. <laughs> I'm hoping that the shit I put out there is joyous and funny enough and such that, that, uh, that people get a, a rounded... They get a round advance experience. They get to hear... Me doing all kinds of uh, fun shit. I hope they get a little bit of everything, you know? They better. I'm going to come out and kick their f***ing ass. That's right. Sorry. Oh, my God. I got... Sorry, Jim. <laughs> we just F-bombing throughout F-bombing the F-bombing like mad. I'm just... I'm so disappointed in my f***ing self. Gay. Damn it. Uh. <laughs> you know I'm gay, too. All right. No, that's not what you were saying. No, I was talking about World War II there for a minute, but you know, come uh, back. Nobody, everybody talks about Enola Gay. No one talks about Boxcar. <laughs> boxcar. B O C K S apostrophe S C A R. Is that it the was, plane for Nagasaki? Uh, you bet. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah, never heard of the name of that plane. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that was the other one. Mm. Tippett was a pilot of uh, Enola Gay. Um, okay. That was his mom's name, but I don't remember who was the pilot of Boxcar. Hey Siri, someone who could. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> hey Siri, <laughs> Sir, bitch, I'm talking to you. See how she is. I know. Siri, hey Siri. My Siri's going off. Oh, you gonna pay? <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm gonna shut your ass down. See how you are? 
Yeah. It's just, said, it's a mystery. We'll never like, know. You, you swear in too much. That's yep. right. You know what? You know, you know how I could make a whole lot of money, Jim? Come up okay. with, uh, come up with replacements for, uh, for series voice, for Waze, oh, yeah. and for uh, Google. Oh, absolutely. And, and have Queen Latifah give you directions. Oh, no, you oh, didn't. No. Oh, no, you <laughs> didn't make a left there. Oh, you know you at Burger King. Are you kidding me? Uh, do we remember <laughs> what your A1C was? You better drive your ass out that parking lot. You're, that would be uh, um, 3.5 miles. There's plenty of people exit. here going almost 50. You're going to get hit. Right? Nifty. Yeah. Man, that would, that would be... That would be the thing. Just rhyme in your direction. I hate to say this, but I had that exact idea like 10 years ago when I was pulling into, like you said, a fast food place. And, you know, Google Maps was saying, turn left here and turn right. And I was like, Google Maps would be saying, you're eating here? <laughs> What's wrong right. with you? Who this would it be, though, Lionel? Dump. Who would it be? <laughs> I, I figure you make all different kinds of ones because uh, one thing you can do, which is enormously entertaining if you lead an incredibly boring life, is just switch your Google Maps to like Hindi or <gasps> Thai and just drive to a normal place. You, you quickly learn the words for right and left in any language oh, yeah. in the world. Um, but I just thought it'd be great. You, I, I don't know why celebrities don't do this. I don't they could, know. Didn't Where they? Wasn't there some of that going on for a while? I thought I thought there was like some mapping voice i could have dreamed it but i'm pretty sure you could i don't, I don't know where it went but have like just, samuel L. jackson give you directions for right or anybody i mean just it was such a great but the, like you said that kind of silly kind of stuff like no you're not going to get your car washed here you know right. we're going somewhere else <laughs> right you know, don't you like stop that. for that bagel <laughs> you can't you can't eat another bagel <laughs> don't you stop for yeah. that bagel sounds like a jim infantino song though. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't you stop for that bagel. That's the precursor to that you song uh, where she's cutting that little bagel with that big knife and oh, dancing yeah. around the, the kitchen. Great big knife. <laughs> yeah. Shoebox bird. Uh, oh, my God. Takes me back. You ain't kidding, man. Easy to do. Mm -hmm. um, Easy to do. Well, um, Vance, have we, kept you, have we kept you too long? We have time no, to talk about one more song. No, you do whatever you need to do. Where am I, where am I going to go? Where am I gonna go? Well, you're going. You are going on the road. I mean, by the time this actually hits the podcast, you will have been. Uh, you'll be traveling around. Um, I know. I talked to Rick Byer today, and he said that you were coming out there for New Year's Eve. For think, New Year's Chicago, Eve, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll be in uh, Chicago. Um, you don't have to list your gigs. I was just saying. No, like, no, no. It's it's yeah, uh, one of the things around. I do go out and do. Uh, it won't be. You guys won't be up. Well, you might be up before this, but. Uh, um, Weekend coming up, I'll be with uh, Paul Reiser. I've been doing a lot of touring with him. Uh, the cool. Mad About You guy. And, uh, yeah. And Stranger Things and everything else. I mean, he started doing stand-up. That was his gig. And uh, he's playing all these places. And uh, I've been out with him off and on since uh, 2014. Not as, not as frequently as I was out with George Carlin in the early 2000s. Yeah, know? I remember that. But, um, but yeah, I've been out with, uh, with, with Paul uh, quite a bit. And uh, so I got, you know, I got that stuff to plan for, and uh, just how is it old. to be, you know, playing uh, with a comedian? I mean, how how does that how is, how does the show feel when you're nothing like it, nothing like it, particularly it's really working great. with a comedian that uh, both those guys, uh, George Carlin and uh, Paul Reiser, were uh, new music and new music well. Uh, Paul Reiser's degree is in composition; he got it at. Uh, a, a SUNY, um, uh, uh, Schenectady, I can't remember, somewhere, you know, one of the state college, of New, state university of New York uh, campuses is where he got his degree in music. Uh, so he's one of those people that operates on, you know, all the sides of his brain. It's kind of, you know, you just want to smack. He's that talented. <laughs> I mean, he's a badass. Wild. And his stand-up thing is just hysterical. It's really wonderful. Um, That's awesome. So yeah, and, but touring with these guys, they have this musical sense. Uh, does that show up in their comedy? You know, I think there's a, they get it when it comes to a curve feel to the show. Mm -hmm. You know, peaks and valleys and, and how to shape a show. Uh, yeah. Both of them are geniuses at what I call collapsing a show. They could take a show that would normally be 45 minutes 
I do the same material somewhere else where the audience is either further away or uh, on a you know, difference between a Friday night and a Sunday night where people have been rested Friday night, they're after work. He'll collapse the show and turn a 45 minute show into a 40. Genius mm -hmm. stuff, man. That's just yeah. how they, they just make the show feel more up paced and, and, uh, but they want you to be what you are too. They don't, uh, neither one of them wanted a whole lot of ballads. Paul Reiser doesn't want a whole lot of ballads. Really? No, no. He he wants it up tempo, and he wants to come out to a crowd that has been uh, up temploly titillated. So he uh, it's, he's not saying like, um, "Don't you be funny too." No, he doesn't care. He doesn't, he doesn't care. care if I reference him. I'm talking about you know, hey, you know, I'm on. You know, I don't know why Paul has hired me so much. Maybe it's just sort of a, some sort of acoustic reparations thing. You know. I'll, I'll, I'll take him down in the middle of, the, of what I'm saying, but he just doesn't want me to do any ballads. So mm. that's been a challenge because I love oh, yeah, up. sad ass crawling along, you know. Well, it's the mixture. You know, you're hilarious one minute and then um, really, you know, you, you play something that's deeply sad or really moving uh, and it's up and down. But of course, that, that's, that's, of course, what I'm trying to do. I mean, that, that's... that's uh, this kind of beautiful evening where you you didn't kind of get on one line and, and ride it in a straight line to the end and then drop off. You, there's these peaks and valleys and um, different kinds of emotions throughout the night. I think. I well, think yeah, yeah, you'd, right you'd hope, but he doesn't want that. No, <laughs> he, he, wants no he just to, wants it up. He wants, he wants it, up. it up. And I was offended yeah. by that at first. We had to go around about it because I had, I had ended a show at one point with, because uh, I was knocking it out and I was working it out. Uh, but I was killing it. Uh, Chris Christopherson's for the good times, mm. and it was uh, I was doing a slow, quiet, heartbreaking version. And I called people. I said that the audience was doing the clap sniff. They would be clap, 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 <laughs> sniff, clap, 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 <laughs> sniff. You know. And I was crushing it. I never forget. It was the middle of a Sunday afternoon. I was walking off the stage. I was like, man, I killed this. And I look up and I see his face, and he's mm. clapping along with them. And he goes, he says, absolutely gorgeous, but next time I want you to keep it up. I go, wow. <laughs> Don't you ever do that again? Exactly. Oh, and he told me, oh. he took me aside in a letter uh, a couple of years later. He says, look, what I mean by that is that I don't want you to leave me like pushing a rope up a hill. Yeah. yeah. You know, they're down at a certain level of recognition of your talent and how groovy and wonderfully warm and everything else it is. But the truth is, you, I mean, you're you're playing music that uh, they're not going to be ready for me to hit them with what I'm doing. Right. They're, you know, I've got to bring them back up, and that makes the evening triply hard for me. I said, "Got you." I have to decide whether I'm going back out to do this. You got to you got to spin the bicycle wheel. You got to keep it moving for them. Exactly. And I had I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that. Then I got. We talked about being arrogant earlier, right? Then I got arrogant yeah. again. I said, "You know what?" Vance, you're a good enough artist that you can work in the auspices of what he's presented you and still kick ass. Yeah, say yes to these shows. So that's what I did. Cool. So yeah, so yeah, now I'm, you know, an up tempo dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're up tempo. You're right. And you know, you're out there in front of people. I think I think that's because, <sighs> you know. Um those are few and far between for me right now. So, right, uh, go out and kill it. I will do what I can, y'all, bitches, man. This was so much fun. Yeah, this is great. Thank you so much for Thanks. for for joining us for our um, very weird little podcast. It is. It is. I mean, what you got a good listenership, I bet though, don't you? Oh well, both of them are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of them falls <laughs> asleep. Uh, James, you know him, James O'Brien. He's asleep by you know. Well, he doesn't listen to the interviews, he said. I, I, he says, I listen to too many interviews. I can listen to interviews anywhere. So he won't listen to this. But So he just listens to one where Lionel and I kind of drone on about the 14th Amendment, and then, and then he falls asleep. Jesus uh, And God. then our other listener, is Sarah? Sarah Elkins, maybe? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't even know just, what to we're say. We're just making these. I don't, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Well, I know you, we've we been trying fun. to get together for a while. I'm glad we finally got it to work on a, yeah. on a whim. I just think it's great. Thank you for taking the time. 
I still would love to buy you a, an herbal tea or a coffee or a, a, a sparkling seltzer someplace. That'd be great. We, That'd be uh, great. Yeah. That'd be great. Let's do that. Or a meal. I'll take oh. food. I mean, you ain't going to be so damn cheap about it, Jim. We can... We, <laughs> this, uh, herbal tea. Shit, I want sushi. Oh, now I'm in... Shit. I dig in my pocket. See? Uh, Lionel, mm. I'll see you when I come through San Antonio sometime, maybe. Come out and see me. Unless yeah, you're absolutely. working, too. You're a musician, are you not, also? No. No. Oh, okay. I'm a hobbyist, but I'm not a performing musician. But uh, are you planning on coming to the San Antonio anytime soon? No. <laughs> okay. I was just wondering if I should book something in my calendar right now. That's all. That's the only reason why I was asking. If you know a time I'm coming, you know more than I know at this point. I okay. don't do anything without the agent knowing about it. So, okay. Yeah, I just don't know. I'll be, you know, but it'd be great to see your face if I come through. That'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be great. Well, you can find out where he's going to be at vanskilbert.com. And this is me winding up the show and going to the outro. Vance, thank you so much for coming. Yep. Thank you. Funny Not Funny podcast is produced by me, Jim Infantino, music by Jim's Big Ego. You can find us at funnynotfunny.bigego.com or wherever you get your podcast. Please leave a rating or review. 